Panama City Beach officials have worked hard to make sure our area is known as a family destination. We'll tell you if they think this weekend's spring break mayhem will change that reputation. And law enforcement officials say they won't let the Destin community suffer the same unrest they saw in Panama City Beach this weekend. You'll hear why they're preparing for their own challenges. Live and Panhandle Strong Together, this is News 13 at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Amy Hoyt. And I'm Tom Lewis. Panama City Beach officials are still trying to wrap their heads around the unruly behavior that occurred along Front Beach Road this weekend. That includes a shooting resulting in six arrests. Officers also seized at least 75 guns. News 13's Jay Coulter kicks off our team coverage tonight, telling us how local law enforcement officials are doing what they can to prevent this from happening again. It pains me to sit up here, and if I sound angry, it's because I am. I'm upset that I have to stand up here. I'm upset that they have to stand up here. I'm, I'm upset that I'm looking at all these weapons that we found on my beach. Local law enforcement agencies seized 75 illegal firearms over a period of two days. Bay County Sheriff Tommy Ford says each of these guns represents an armed encounter with a law enforcement officer. This weekend could have very easily resulted in some tragedies of an officer's loss of life, a citizen's loss of life, or even a bad guy's loss of life that would have been a tragedy. All of those would be a tragedy. A 22-year-old Cropwell, Alabama man named Javante Sanders is facing gun-related charges in this weekend shooting. Authorities booked 161 people into the Bay County Jail on a variety of charges. I assure you that this will not be a real fun beach at the Bay County Jail. If you come here to act like a criminal, we'll treat you like one. Talamento says that planning for these type of events organized over social media can be challenging. There's no framework in place to judge how a social influencer or a social media event would impact occupancy in any municipality. One post can go viral, one post can be a dud. It's hard to gauge that. But he says most, if not all, of the crowds from this weekend are gone. We saw a mass exodus yesterday after the shooting. We stayed out late last night just doing a threat assessment, ensuring that the community is safe. Currently, as we stand right now, it doesn't appear that this specific group is still in town um, however we are on guard and we are still looking as for extending spring break laws or imposing a curfew telementis maintains nothing is off the table in panama city beach jay coulter news 13 panhandle strong panama city beach city council members will be holding a special meeting friday morning to discuss this weekend's events if you want to see more of those who were taken into custody this weekend you can go to our website mypanhandle.com this weekend couldn't have helped tourism officials' efforts to promote this area as a family-friendly destination. This weekend looked more like the old spring break days. News 13's Anna Hoffman continues our team coverage tonight, telling us how some visitors are already rethinking their decision to come to this real fun beach. Some visitors who traveled to Panama City Beach this weekend say the mayhem was like a wet blanket on their vacation. It was kind of scared us. We would rather just go back to the hotel and be done with it. Yeah, so we just we canceled plans and just went back home. For other families, the unruly behavior made them question if they wanted to stay. It was scary. I've, I've been hearing about different things around the area and, you know, people just being crazy. And so, yeah, I said to my husband, I hope that's not what the rest of this trip is like because it's scary. Like, I don't want to be outside alone at, at nighttime if that's what's going to be going on. Panama City Beach officials have worked hard over the last few years trying to distance themselves from the old spring break image and appeal to more families. Don't come to our community if you're looking for trouble. Bay County's Tourist Development Council Executive Director Dan Rowe says these visitors are not their target audience and they don't reflect what this community is really about. The activities that happened, the lawless behavior that happened this weekend was not indicative of our, our community, our visitors. I mean, there's nothing about this that is really part of the Panama City Beach brand. Other tourists say the few people testing the limits are preventing others from enjoying the real fun beach. At a certain point, it becomes kind of... It becomes wrong, like even more wrong, because you know that you're putting other people in danger, not just the person that you necessarily have a problem with. In Panama City Beach, Anna Hoffman, News 13, Panhandle Strong. Rowe wants to assure visitors that Panama City Beach is a safe place to be, and he is thankful for all the law enforcement that stepped up this weekend.
Sheriff's officials in Walton and Okaloosa counties are concerned about similar problems. They addressed those concerns this morning. Social media posts are circulating, promoting events being billed as the Destin Takeover and Crab Island Takeover, scheduled for April 9th. Walton Sheriff Michael Atkinson says deputies from both Walton and Okaloosa counties are prepared for these events. They will have beefed up Marine and BUI patrols on upcoming weekends, similar to that scene on the 4th of July. What we're talking about here is adults. And with adults, we are going to take zero discretion in dealing with this. We are taking people to jail. If there's a way to take them to jail, they will go to jail. Sheriff Atkinson went on to say they aren't taking over anything. Similar takeover social media posts led up to the events that unfolded this weekend here on Panama City Beach. Well, back when Panama City Beach was the spring break capital of the world, a massive sign greeted breakers to the world's largest nightclub to party with thousands, but not anymore. Workers used a crane over the weekend to remove the massive Club La Vila sign from the iconic nightclub's parking lot. Club owners used this huge sign for decades to advertise their musical acts, events, and club promotions. La Vila closed when Hurricane Michael hit in October of 2018. And then a few months later, the building caught fire as work crews were trying to repair some of the hurricane damages. It is yet to reopen. The Pfeffer family, which owned the nightclub since the late 1980s, has not announced any plans for the building or the property. The Washington County man is accused of striking.